Hi, my name is Joshua Kirkpatrick, and today I'll be speaking about student loans. Let's look at some facts. Over 44 million Americans have student loan debt. With those Americans, there's about an 11% delinquency rate. Since 1980, tuition costs have risen over 344%. So currently, as it stands, the average cost per year of a public university is a little over $25,000. So you may ask yourself, what's the lesson? It's about borrowing how much you can afford, not borrowing as much as possible. Let's look at the basics of a loan. A loan lessens the burden of paying cash outright. And in many cases, you may be familiar with a personal loan or an amount of credit that is extended to be paid back at a later point in time with interest. So, one of the first things that you might want to understand is how are interest rates established. A high credit rating can lead to a low interest rate because there's a low amount of risk and vice versa with having a low credit score. Now let's talk about fixed versus floating interest rates. Floating, or variable interest rates, change as time moves on. Payments can also change. However, fixed interest rate loans do not change, as well as their payments. Let's look at the differences between federal versus private loans. There's an important distinction. Namely, the federal loans have fixed interest rates whereas private may have fixed or variable rates. Along with that, while you're in school, the interest starts accruing on both federal and private loans. However, while you're at least a half-time student, the federal government will pay the interest that accrues on your federal loans. However, private loans must be paid back while you're attending school. Now let's take a look at grants, loans, and scholarships. First, grants and scholarships are known as gift aid. Grants are based on need, whereas scholarships are based on merit. All three types of monetary aid can come from the federal, state, or local government, as well as your own college or a private organization. Unlike loans, grants and scholarships don't need to be paid back. So, when you finally get a grant or scholarship, you may ask yourself, how can I maintain this? Well, meet the requirements and the deadlines, and among other things, thank the donors that granted you that monetary aid. Let's look at some options for repaying your student loan debt. Popular methods of paying off your loans include scholarships, grants, cash, or other loans. However, other loans aren't suggested. However, the other three options are widely encouraged and utilized on a daily basis throughout the entire world. Now, whenever you begin the process of applying to schools and trying to figure out the amount of tuition that you're going to have to pay and how to pay it off, you may ask yourself, who offers student loans? Well, many institutions offer loans. Some of the most notable banks are Discover, SunTrust, Citizens Bank, PNC, Ascent, and there are a lot of other financial institutions that offer loans. However, these loans, private loans, are more costly than, say, federal loans. Now let's move on to the different types of loans. First, let's talk about subsidized versus unsubsidized loans. Subsidized loans are typically federal government loans in which the interest as it accrues while you're in school is paid for by the federal government. Whereas unsubsidized loans, just like private loans, are not taken care of in the same manner. While the interest accrues while you're in school, you still have to pay for it. Now, you, you may be thinking, since 
federal government loans are subsidized and the interest is being paid for, is there any requirement that comes with that? Well, yes. First, whenever your subsidized loan is given to you and it goes straight to your school, it pays for things in a sort of order. For example, the first, tuition and fees. Then it moves on to room and board. And it is important to note that both subsidized and unsubsidized loans are legal agreements, which means you must sign a master promissory note. Take a look at the bottom to figure out how your situation may apply to these different types of loans and their different interest rates. Now let's talk about Parent PLUS loans. They're parent loans for current undergraduate students that are backed by the government. In order to receive such a loan, the student must be enrolled at least half the time. They're not based upon any financial need. Whenever the parent applies for the loan, they are held responsible for it. And graduate students may borrow these types of loans as well. However, they have to reach their limits for unsubsidized and subsidized loans as well. Next, let's talk about Stafford loans. These are the most common type of loans for students to take out. They're backed by the government, both subsidized and unsubsidized. And just a fun fact, they're typically called direct loans. At the bottom of the screen, you will see on both the left and right side, advantages and disadvantages of taking out a Stafford loan. To continue with Stafford loans, let's look at the two different types, subsidized and unsubsidized. First, on the subsidized side, payments are made upon graduation, and the government covers the interest while you're in school. In order to qualify for a subsidized Stafford loan, your family income must be below $50,000 per year, and the subsidized loan cannot accrue more than $23,000. Whereas on the unsubsidized side, there is no subsidy. Payments still are deferred, however. There is an annual limit to how much you can take out in the form of unsubsidized Stafford loans at the annual limit of $12,500, and overall, it cannot exceed $138,500. For medical students, they allow these students to take out more with an overall total limit of $224,000. Now, let's talk about FAFSA. Hi, my name is Josh Bechtold, and in this last section of the presentation, I will be talking about FAFSA, the Federal Application for Student Aid. Now, you might be wondering, how do I access my loans? Well, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that. First, you would want to go to studentloans.gov and sign in with your username or password that you created whenever you started the program. You would want to view my documents and the first thing that you'll see whenever you enter the system is view my documents. So you will simply click on that. You would want to filter by disclosure statements. There's a box up there, it's pretty easy, and you want to click on the most recent year for the filing date so you have the most accurate representation of your student loans. The next thing you would want to do is to view and print the disclosure statement. If you can't print it, that's completely fine. You can just save it to your laptop or your flash drive. This will show you what type of loan you have, the amount, and the interest rate that will accrue after college. Some examples could be whether they are direct subsidized loans or unsubsidized loans, which would have different impacts on the interest rate and the amount that you will ultimately pay. Now, if you're not in college and you're applying for FAFSA, where do I start? Well, you can complete the FAFSA form or renewal FAFSA because you have to do it every year, even in college. You can review the financial award letter that your college has given you, or you can contact the school's financial aid office. It's a very easy process and they can definitely help you through it. 
Last thing you would want to do is review and sign all of the paperwork and make sure that it is accurate to the best of your knowledge. While it's not required, it is recommended that there is parental guidance, especially if you are doing this for the first time and you're under the age of 18. So recommended that you either have one parent or one guardian there just to help you with the process. All right, so now you graduated. Now what? You have all these student loans, how are you gonna pay them? There are different methods for paying off different loans. First thing you wanna do is compare the interest rates. Make sure that you can have a lower interest rate if you can. You wanna pay off loans with the highest interest rate first. Now, it may be a little daunting to see all these loans that you have with all these different interest rates, and it might sound like a lot of money, but the best thing to do financially for yourself is to pay the minimum payments for all of your other loans, but really focus on nailing down that payment loan with the highest interest rate. Now, refinancing is an option. Keep your options out there. Many banks can give out personal loans, and sometimes these personal loans can have a lower interest rate than federal loans or your current student loans. So it's definitely something of importance to keep in mind. Now we're gonna talk about two different examples of a graduate with student loans. So the first example is a graduate with $25,000 in personal loans with an interest rate of 7.5%. Now it's the same scenario for both. The only difference is the first scenario, the minimum payment is $200 per month. But the second scenario, the payee is making an $850 per month payment. You'll see that the time period of the repayment for the first scenario is 244 months or 20 years. It's rather quite long, but it's also quite normal for student loans or personal loans. But the payment where there's the $850 a month, the time and period of repayment is only 32 months, a little bit under three years. So the final interest paid in the first scenario where you're just making the minimum payment, you'll be paying $24,000. That's almost the amount of the loan. But in the second scenario, if you save and you put off more towards your student loans or your personal loans, the interest paid is only $2,700. So what's the point? Well, the point is affordability versus excessive borrowing. Make sure that you can refinance at a lower interest rate if possible and pay off your student loan debt sooner rather than later. The point is figuring out if college is right for you. Obviously, there are many other factors to consider, but definitely a big factor to consider is student loan payments. That concludes our student loan presentation for today. If you have any questions or comments about FAFSA or different types of student loans, feel free to contact your financial aid office of the college that you attend. Thank you and have a good day.